Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eleanor Fernandez, and my presentation focuses on the archives of a French theatre company called the Compagnie Le Brouillard, for which I have been doing archiving work since 2019. And this company was founded in 1990 by director Joël Pomera and uh, Anne Amizaga, who became a, a co-director in 2000 and who is too soon become the co-director of the Festival d'Avignon in France. Uh, Joël Pomera always uses the stage at as the, the starting point of uh, his work. He conceptualizes his productions on stage and each element of the production is organized gently on stage. Uh, the play is just written and developed using a palimpsest-like process. Well, actors improvise based on themes and uh, stage directions decided on at the end of uh, internships. Uh, Joël Pomera uh, guides the improvisation, gives directions, and uh, suggests uh, improvements. Uh, the improvisation are entirely filmed every day. And then uh, Joël Pomera uh, writes uh, his scripts based on uh, these improvisations and teaches them to the actors in order to spawn new improvisations, consequently allowing the different scenes uh, to evolve and furthering the playwriting process. Uh, costume designer Isabelle Defant, uh, set designer Eric Soyer, and the stage crew members also uh, attend rehearsals, allowing them to work together on uh, writing and developing the production's aesthetics. This has been Joel Penra's creative process since his debut. And this uh, lengthy process comprising uh, rehearsals and uh, rewriting and filming constitutes, as uh, we will see, <laughs> one of the founding principles of the archival work at the Compagnie Le Broyard. Indeed, um, all this uh, archival footage generated by the creative process goes hand in hand with uh, Andy Amizaga's desire to accumulate every record of the creative process and the evolution of uh, of live per performance, however small it may be. And however, uh, the archives which I am going to try to map out today, uh, there is a, a production of uh, archival footage, are actually the archives of the Compagnie Louis Brouillard. Uh, the, the years of daily archiving work for the, for the Compagnie Louis Brouillard raise uh, the following questions. How does this uh, new archival territories generated and stored by theater companies themselves create a shift in both theater and uh, archive paradigms? How does this uh, work redefine the notion of uh, theater archives and the place of the archivist role in the daily life of an active theater company? I will use the company Le Bruyère's archives and creative process as a case study to map out new archival territories in a three-step presentation. Well, uh, let's begin with um, another view of the um, theatrical aesthetics of Joel Pomra by looking at some of his productions. Uh, the, image, uh, the images, sorry, you can see here are photographs of are most commonly chosen by, uh, by theaters and by the company for promotional brochures and, and show leaflets and programs, as you can see just right here. And all these photos and the visuals are the work of one photographer, Elisabeth Caricchio. And the aesthetics of uh, Joel Pomera's production is best described by uh, Joel Gaillot as a reconciling and impalpable form of dreamlike, dreamlike unreality and a concrete presence rarely seen before on stage. And this is the aesthetic of turmoil that uh, Elisabeth Car Caricchio um, captures on, uh, on, uh, in, sorry, in her shots. And the actors are, are illuminated using the clair-obscure technique developed by set designer Eric Soyer. 
and they are constantly tittering between a, a blurred sense of time and the elusiveness of a, a past or a present. And uh, to conclude this uh, overview of the theatrical aesthetics of uh, Joel Pomera, I would like to specify that the productions I mentioned here are currently still on tour. And uh, the first one is uh, Conte les Jean, created in uh, 2019. And uh, you can also see um, Thaïra and of Louis, uh, created in uh, 2015, and uh, Le Petit Chaperon Rouge, or Little Riding Red Hood, created in uh, 2004 with uh, over a thousand shows. And uh, this is the first aspect that I want to highlight as um, it directly influences archival generation. More specifically, the company's daily work routine as productions by Joel Poma keep on touring. Uh, let, let's take the, the example of uh, Little Red uh, Riding Hood created in uh, 2004 and still on tour uh, to this day. Well, this production already belongs to the past and it is, uh, however, uh, a multi-layered past because the audience's memories of the show from uh, 2004 are now overturned by the current performances of the actors who are still on stage. And some have remained the same, some actors have been replaced, but there is no denying that it is simultaneously the same production and a new one. And uh, just uh, like uh, this, um, these sheets, <clears throat> as you can see uh, here, some of which date um, back several years and the other from last month. And this is the paradox that, that in my opinion, uh, the work of an archivist in, uh, in contemporary companies is based on. Indeed, how does one archive footage that is a live performance constantly undergoing a new creative process while necessar necessarily reaching a finiteness by the end of each show? Well, and the finiteness is materialized in the archives by production tickets, the audience's leaflets, uh, press articles, and posts on the internet, etc., collected by the company's administrative team as they follow the, the production as, as it travels on tour. And the traditional, traditional approach to archiving is challenged by this continuous accumulation of documents within the, this archival territory. The archive is no longer a, a single repository of the past. It is multifaceted and ongoing. And this need for a, a continuous collection of uh, related uh, archival material on the representation is, in my opinion, best summarized by Alice Folco in uh, her article, um, The Use of uh, Non-Artistic Sources in Terrorizing the Creative Process. You can see it just right here. Well, when we see how much administrative and commercial documents can teach us retrospectively about the material conditions during production and how any record can create meaning without necessarily being directly linked to the creative process in the artistic sense, today, one will tend to advocate that for the collection and storage of as many documents as possible, including most mundane on contemporary productions. Well, the company Le Broyard participates in the logistics of archival collection, which must be extensive in order to ensure a continuity of the record. And this accumulation is therefore ordered and archived in the second step of archival work. To further define the outlines of these new archival territories, I will now uh, describe how the archiving work is divided within the company um, Reboyard. So it's um, the step two, a shift in the theatrical archival landscape and archival stratification. Well, you can see 
Here, the paper archives of the company. The uh, archives of the company Le Broyard are divided into two parts. First, uh, each document, whether digital or in a paper format, is recorded in the company database called OTRA, a specific archiving program. Currently, around 6,000 archival documents are listed there. And you can see another right here and the database. <clears throat> well, uh, each archive is sorted by production, and uh, an archival document can be a press article, a book, a show booklet, a program, a video, a sound recording, a photo, a letter, etc. And each document must also be labeled with a date and or an author, as much as possible, of course. It is also possible to enter the source of the document in the software, whether it is a digital format or a paper format. And such indications then make it possible to locate the document either in the paper archives or in the digital Dropbox. Well, uh, this archiving work is what uh, allows the record keeping year after year by uh, classifying each uh, show document and thus allows uh, the company's archives to uh, gradually be collected. And the, the interest of such uh, rigorous and daily sorting make it possible to keep track of this uh, evolving creative process. Uh, for example, um, in the company's archives, there are five different recordings of uh, uh, the show Saira and of Chris, including uh, one show that dating back to um, uh, 2015, uh, tracing back the genesis of the show. Uh, I'm not talking here about uh, documents recorded for, for work on set, but about the, the first public performance of uh, Saira and of Chris filmed in 2015. And this footage attests that the, the show was presented to the audience as a work in progress from the beginning of its shows open to the public in, in Mons, France in 2015. And the more recent footage may show, for example, the, the changes made by the actors as they perform, but uh, also some uh, small changes in the scripts and very short moments during which the uh, actor improvised. And as a consequence, the accumulation of show footage generates a, a shifting stratification that is best illustrated by the archives aborescence and this uh, thoroughly organized accumulation finally allows the company to keep track of the ongoing productions and their evolutions. And this variation of each performance is captured by the archives to a certain extent. And they give access to all the strata of the creative process of a single production that can be, that can then be collected and organized. And this strata then form a set of scattered islands which look at first sight like a single set, but each element can be analyzed independently in the arborescent structure. And however, the archivist's work to create the archival stratification does not rely on a permanent accumulation, but rather on permanent record keeping. Indeed, um, the phenomenon of constant addiction with, which creates this stratification paradoxically uh, translates to some form of shortage and difficulty to conceptualize the creative process in theater. Uh, Arlette Farge uh, wrote in the, the other of the archives, uh, the archive is not stuck in uh, which one will build into for fun, there is a constant shortage. And while the archive is shortage, in the sense that it is doomed to failure, it contains no reality, but it is invested with a reality that's different for everyone. And the shortage is manifested further within the performing arts archives, as by definition, it's each production is uh, an uh, ongoing performance that shifts uh, with every show. And this uh, arborescence of uh, digital archives reveals uh, that the archives of the company Rubuya, uh, also abundant, ultimately remain very fragmented.
And under such conditions, the archivist's job is always to keep track of all archival data. And however, the archivist does not pick and choose right there. Um, they keep track of the of the disjointed creative process as best as they can uh, with the only fragments they will ever have. And um, those come and pour over the archives they will offer an, uh, an additional interpretation and take them to a, a new field of inquiry. And we test and turn into the, the new territory of the archivist who the main task in, uh, is to, to keep track of the production's evolution through the ongoing archival stratification. And uh, this observation is uh, the last point I will make in this presentation. Well, my step three, uh, the shifting architecture and uh, tectonics of the archive is taming instability's best way to preserve it. Well, the contemporary archive <coughs> in the field of theater and performing arts adapts to uh, its changing medium. There is never one, but many representations, as you can see on the, uh, the image of this uh, profusion, uh, for example, of tickets. <laughs> and this is how we can conceptualize the notion of shifting stratification in keeping a record of contemporary productions caught between an archival architecture being built and the shifting tectonics of the archival territory is what I called um, a tectonic archival stratification. The archive's new task consists in uh, uh, accompanying this movement. For this reason, um, the, the work of the theater archivist is constantly redefined. No company that is uh, the same as another and each has its um, own creative process. Each company has a specific and intimate relationships with uh, its own archives. And there, are, there may, of, of course, be a similar archiving protocol, but each company will determine which document it decides to keep or not. And this eclectic choice specific to each company is what makes it possible to keep track of the evolutionary movement of a show and uh, its memory. And today, the archive takes uh, on a multimedia form. It is scattered among photographs and audio recordings and film prospectuses, press articles, etc. It is also uh, often takes on a digital scale that is much greater than the uh, traditional paper medium due to the way it follows the ongoing movement of archival generation and use. And the archives capture a, a screenshot of the company's work in context revolving around a given production. The archive attests part and parcel of each performance and of the creative process that is uh, required to create it. This uh, reciprocal movement between productions and their archives reveals the horizon of contemporary theater archives. And the challenge is to conquer the ever-shifting territory of the archive. The archives of companies should not be denied or, in, or ignored because by leaving them a, a proper place, it is the instability of research, of research and the creation that can be saved. By allowing the archivist to uh, circumscribe the daily life of a company, researches and reflection can be brought to the forefront of this new archival landscape. And this is how the archivist work and the archive are redefined within the realm of performing arts in the area of playwriting from the stage as theorized by uh, Bruno Teckels in 2015 concerning uh, Romeo Castellucci, Anatoly Vassiliev, and Rodrigo, Rodrigo Garcia, and people de Del Bono, or even Ariane Mushkin. The creative process has become a collective challenge by making a use of on-stage improvisations. It seems more and more difficult to keep track of the density of a production's creative process of a company's work in the long run with only fixed documents of uh, scripts and the uh, creative archives. 
And however, the archive has never been multiplied so much, whether on paper or, or digital media, because this potential of the archive is ever growing, always revealing new perspectives and of analysis and new avenues for interpretations. In short, uh, a new territory that is ever more extensive and quite dazing for the archive in contemporary theater. Well, I would like to conclude of the archives of the Compagnie Royale, just like uh, keeping a track of turmoil. Because uh, the daily archives of the Compagnie Le Bruyère make it possible to map out a contextual landscape of theater productions and their evolution. These new archives are organized in strata and layers in order to remain uh, legible of, as the accumulation goes on. A sense of movement thus uh, becomes apparent because this stratification only further alights all the possible interpretations each production goes through at any given point. And the creative process constantly changes, and therefore the different strata do too. And the task at the end uh, is uh, the record keeping of this creative motion in order to preserve its momentum. It is by projecting the shifting instability of the company archives and the impermanence of the archival material that we can best understand the creative challenge of contemporary theater productions, as my example with the Compagnie Le Royale demonstrates. The archives of, of the Compagnie Le Royale, uh, mirroring Joel Pomer's aesthetic of John Royce, will always remain unstable, always on the lookout, open to interpretations and feelings and sensitive to varying ongoing movement. The archival document, which has become a contemporary archive, will always retain a path that is ever shifting as it opts to capture reality, the way Joel Pomera does on stage. And working in the daily archives of the company, of this company, and, and trying to, to define the aesthetic of Pomera Stromoy has been as the and the guess, main task over the years. And indeed, the archive is difficult to, uh, to circumscribe it and must be understood as such. As Jacques Derrida put it, just we have here, with an uh, irreplaceable singularity of a document to be interpreted, repeated, reproduced, but each time in its original iniquiteness, an archive must be idiomatic and therefore both offered and stolen from translation, opened and subtracted from iteration and technical reproducibility. Nothing is therefore murkier and more disturbing today than the concept archived in this term, archive. <laughs>